right, this is Reef Adventures number three. And we have the tank stand in the house uh, by the help of the easy movers. The wife helped me get it in the house and then we slid it across the floor on this uh, carpet and the tile. Just fine using the easy movers. So definitely recommend getting a set of those. Those things actually do work. Um, I'll be... Uh, I left them underneath there because I'll be moving this out um, to do the work that, that I'll be showing you today in this series of videos. And just want to real quickly just say what the goal is for this video and what we'll be covering. Um, basically, I will be installing the plywood that will be going on top. And just wanted to show you the, uh, how true this is, and this is very important. Um, when you look down the top here, you should see everything disappear pretty much at the same time. If anything, this side over here might be just a little bit low as we can kind of see that it dips down. Maybe. But, I mean, that should be your check that you should look at the, the tank stand and just make sure that as you look down it, everything kind of disappears at the same time the front edge and the rear edge okay so we'll be putting the top plate on and uh, gonna be putting plywood across the bottom and then plywood across the back the top plywood will be three quarter inch the bottom plywood will be, be, will be three quarter inch and then um, I think I'm gonna use some plywood that I already have across the back if it works out if not I'm gonna head into town and get some more three quarter inch um, we're going to line this with core board. That's the stuff that you see people make signs out of. Uh, we're going to put core board on the bottom, on the back, on the top. It's all white, so it's going to reflect really nicely. Uh, we're going to install a refugium grow light, 24 inches in the top. And also we're going to have a uh, surge protector that we're going to install on the left-hand side. Because when the tank is set up, um, the, the sump is actually going to be justified to the right. I want all my electronics and I'm going to build a partition uh, out of core board later uh, basically just to um, keep the salt spray off of all the electrical equipment including the pump. So um, that partition will be installed later as we know really how much real estate everything is going to be taken up. I did uh, just win a uh, on, on eBay, I want a Reef Dynamics or Euro Reef uh, protein skimmer um, at 135 model. It's not going to be big enough for this tank completely, but it is a good start. Uh, I got it at a really good price. So, starting to put all the pieces together, and uh, future episodes will definitely show you how we're going to put that in. Um, kind of rambling on now, but uh, one thing this is the couch. Two couches just happened to basically we reconfigured our living room used to have that over there this this was kind of like the Labrador retrievers couch but now it is the the couch for viewing the tank and I'm sitting in the couch right now as I was uh, telling you um, definitely don't want to make it too tall because as we look up we're going to be seeing some of the lights uh, but if we sit up here, uh, I'm, I'm 5'10", uh, so just a little bit short of 6 foot. As I sit here, um, you know, I'll still be able to see a good amount of the tank. So the, um, the mirror there, kind of halfway up the mirror, represents about where the top of the tank is going to be. So if that gives you some idea for, for how it's going to look in the very end. So enough said. I'm going to get to work and uh, be showing you a little bit of video as, as things go along. And if I think it's uh, necessary to show you some of the steps to uh, make life easier on you, I definitely will do. So I'm getting ready to count or cut the uh, top here out of this three-quarter inch birch, which is not a cheap piece of wood by any means. Uh, runs about $45 at the Home Depot. Uh, just wanted to show you, I have a table saw, but this is a portable table saw and doesn't really give you much stability 
Uh, it's more like for cutting OSB and, and sheeting for uh, construction sites. So it's a construction table saw. Um, so I'm not going to use it to cut this. I'm going to use the Makita circular saw. And I would never recommend doing uh, using a uh, six foot level as a straight guide or a cutting guide. They make, they, they sell cutting guides for about 20 bucks. I just um, didn't want to spend the money on one. This is a cheap level. This is one, this is a good way to, to ruin a good level. So definitely don't do this. But um, also I wanted to show you the, uh, the what I'm using to, to stabilize the piece of board since I'm working here alone. I don't have anybody to catch the board. So I have these centered up. And these are just landscaping blocks, which work out pretty nice. I had some left over. Um, you could actually probably buy some and use them for the purpose and take them back afterwards. I mean, why not? I mean, they're not going to ruin them. But uh, so I use six of them, and uh, they have a little lip on them, which works out really good when you turn them over. It actually holds the wood kind of in place and stabilizes it. But so I have that centered up there. I've uh, drawn a dummy line there just to make sure that I'm on track. And this piece right here is going to be cut to 72 and a half. Um, I've set my uh, straight edge on the uh, the amount that, that I'm going to need offset for the blade. So we'll see how this turns out. All right, getting ready to basically notch the the bottom panel here. I'll try to talk a little bit faster since my videos are taking too long. Um, so the bottom panel here needs to be notched. Obviously, it's going to sit in here in the legs that come down in the support and the support uh, uprights um, are going to be in the way. So we want this to be captured all the way around so that there's no warping uh, that could be possible. So this piece right here ended up being 23 and 3 eighths. So uh, definitely not 24 inches, uh, which kind of makes me wonder uh, where the eighth inch went. I guess maybe the cut. Um, but that doesn't really make sense. So a four by eight sheet of plywood is really, they're shorting you at eighth inch, I guess. But anyways, um, so a couple of tools I'm gonna use for this. Obviously I'm using my landscaping blocks again, which works out really nice to give us exactly the right height um, to be able to mark this. So we're gonna mark um, the, the outside, the side facing out first, and then we're gonna mark the other side. So we're gonna cut our notches um, this way first. Uh, the, by lining it up, uh, we're going to know um, exactly where to, to notch it. Uh, we're going to use a couple different tools here to aid us in this. Obviously, uh, tape measures work good for measuring uh, depth, but uh, we're going to use these oversized calipers here that you can get at Harper Freight. Um, they really come in handy. It's kind of a no-brainer. You just trans transfer the uh, measurement over to your pencil marks. Uh, we're going to use this Harbor Freight square and um, make our marks in here. We're actually going to have to cut off a little bit here in the end, which some of that is the fact that the uprights or the legs, the four corner legs, are back set because of necessary to do the weld. Um, so that's a, a little bit of that is is to attribute to that, and probably a little bit of it is to say that the legs aren't perfectly square, um, even though if you were to take the square to them right now, it would look really good. So you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, it all adds up. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this so that this sits on top of the rounded and doesn't overhang at all. Um, so we want to set this back so that on the lip here, it, it sits on the flat part and doesn't sit on any of this rounded. That would give it a more finished look. So uh, we'll take our square and, and line that up. And it should be, um, it's not going to be the corner leg here. It's good. We're going to have to figure out where it is based on this piece. All right, making progress here. I uh, just wanted to show you what I've done so far. I've cut the piece down there, also there, and at the other corner. 
ripped it down to the right uh, overall width or length of the uh, so that this would not overhang too far. So what I'm going to do now is instead of using the same method I did for the back side, I'm actually going to use this small little square and mark each piece and then measure the depth um, that I need. Um, so the real question is, is you know, how far this is going to overhang on this bottom piece in the back. Um, don't think it's absolutely that critical that they are exactly where they need to be all the way around. Um, but this will uh, definitely get me lined up. I just need to account for this angle here when I do this piece. Um, so just account for all the welds. I didn't say that earlier. Just remember that each of the welds is going to need to have a little bit of clearance also when you measure. So you get the idea of how to uh, do the backside. Okay, so the piece looks good, uh, but one problem, um, didn't really think about it, is that no matter what angle I put this in, because of that area there and this angle coming down, I'm gonna have to split the seam right there. And I'll show you what I mean as I install them. But that's something to consider when uh, when installing this. You're just not going to know until, I mean, unless you really, really, really think this stuff out. But uh, uh, this will work out just fine. So here's the stand with the polyurethane applied to the wood and the wood in place. Nothing has been drilled yet or screwed in. Um, it's going to be metal um, screws inch and a quarter uh, so I get a three quarter plus another three quarter uh, through the eighth inch wall steel I mean obviously everything's two inch so there's no risk of going through the other side or anything else like that um, kind of stopped right here because I realized that my countersink a wood countersink is just not very sharp um, I'm gonna mark these holes out on the top here and space them evenly all the way around and uh, you know really uh, make them very uniform uh, countersink them the metal screws I have is counter or countersink screws um, pan head screws so the, the big reason for that obviously the the tank is going to sit on top but I want to make sure that even if the tank compresses the wood at all, at all that the tank doesn't uh, start to come in contact with these metal screws that are going through the wood into the metal. So over here on the left, I'm going to sit down on the couch here. Um, over here on the left, you can see this panel, That's that this plywood panel that's there. I, I, I split the post. You always want to do that just in case for some reason I decide I do want to add another piece of plywood over here at a later date. Um, the refugium and the sump are going to be on this side. There's going to be a light underneath. Um, the reason why I did go ahead and put this plywood on this side uh, is because uh, different things like uh, circuit board or um, uh, surge protectors, apex controllers, different things that you're going to want to mount up high away from the water, away from the risk of being in the water. Um, you know, I'll have a nice three-quarter birch uh, plywood to screw into. And I actually used every bit of this plywood. So every bit of the 4x8 sheet was used. Um, everything came out pretty pretty good. Uh, so, yep. If you have any comments or questions, you know, feel free to put them on there. Uh, I'm starting to get a pretty good number of views on the videos. So I'm going to continue to do them. Also, I left that open. Obviously, I didn't have the material but the way I look at it is, is uh, you know, that, that's just going to be able to allow everything to vent out the top. And if I want to run wires up behind the tank, I don't have to drill a hole or anything else like that. So that actually kind of works out to my advantage. Um, I probably will put a piece of wood across the back just to make and screw the plywood into it just to make sure that the plywood doesn't warp between posts.